Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. I really don't like the victimhood that he is dis- like oh, it's so oh, exhausting nauseating and it is to me so detached from not only are like his facts and figures on vaccines and covid detached from reality his his analysis of like he has been remember when he did the foot press conference and he was loud about this person wrote the article, fake news, bad journalism. And the person you saw about didn't write the article. It was a different reporter. I like to be that loud and that wrong about something that basic and not publicly apologize, maybe privately did. I don't know, not publicly apologize. And then to come out and be like the whole world was rooting for me because they're rooting against me. Yeah, man, because you have been intentionally provocative. You have been intent. You, you can't wade into these waters intentionally, knowingly, smugly, and then it would have been, could you imagine, I, this is the analogy I was trying to bring up on your show today, if after the Chiefs loss, if I went on TV, if they had lost to the Bills, if I went on TV and I was like, I got to tell you guys, I think it's outrageous the things Bills fans are saying to me on Twitter. What? I've been an asshole to them for two years. I've been daring them to do it. Like, it. it there is an element of, like, if you are to cross-pollinate a bit, I think if people are mean on Twitter to Scott Van Pelt, they're probably just assholes. Because Scott is in our business, but doesn't do, especially since he left radio, he doesn't give controversial opinions. He seems incredibly likable. He does sports center. He's always smiling. He's nice. He's nice online. When people are mean to you or me, I'm usually like, yeah, probably, it's probably fair. Like, you know what I mean? I prefer not <laughs> some of it, but like we, we engender We're that. We're provocative yeah. people. And so like, I just, I, it is so baffling to me. Like at least Baker doesn't whine about it. Like Baker knows that people are going to come after him. I think he wants people to, and he like uses it, tries to use his fuel. Maybe it doesn't work. But for Aaron to do this, woe is me stuff, I think is unbecoming. I think it's really unbecoming. Well, and also, um, Russell Wilson, Brady, Peyton Manning, Mahomes, Josh Allen keep illustrating and telling you how much they love the game. Yes. Aaron is constantly reminding you he could leave it tomorrow and be totally happy. It's called projecting. When you have to remind me that you don't need something— you need something. But even, by the way, even if it's not projecting, even if it's totally true, it's terrible marketing. It's like, you. Do you this is a sport where you have 80,000 people in zero degree weather paying money to be in that environment. I'm going to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to sit in the cold, in the snow, to cheer for you. That's how much I care about it. I'm going to build my Sundays around it. That's how much I care about it. You don't want to hear from the star players that, eh, you know, I, I, I could take it or leave it. Even if it's true, it's just it's just terrible. It, it, again, I'll just use our business. You, the number one thing you probably used to hear, maybe you still do, is people say, oh, my God, you have the dream job. Like, oh, my God, I wish I could do what you do for a living. You get to talk about sports for a living. Do you think people would find you or me as relatable or as likable if we were regularly being like, let me tell you something, I don't really love the gig that much. Like, I'm really more into, like, art and sculpting. <laughs> like, I do it because I'm good at it and it pays well. But, yeah, kind of bores me. People would be like, man, bleep you. I'd kill for that job. Like, you just eat. And, by the way, there have probably been times in your career where maybe you have needed a new challenge. Maybe it did bore you. You're like, okay, I've kind of mastered this part of it. But you wouldn't tell people that, You're right. not publicly. It's just, I don't know. The fact that Rodgers has gone from the public, like, a Q rating or whatever that he had nine months ago to this, without there being a crime committed, is unprecedented. Yeah. It's unprecedented for someone's public image to go through this without there being some massive scandal. Yeah, listen, you can't rip the president 
Fauci, the vaccine, the media, and think there'll be absolutely no blowback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? It's so nuts. It's such a, it's, and that's the thing is, it, and I always worry, like, this is the thing with people and that Kyrie, and this is not a vaccine thing with Kyrie, people that are smart-ish, that think they're brilliant, usually end up sounding incredibly dumb. Way dumber than the dumb guy who knows he's not that bright. So he's like, I'm not really going to talk about all this stuff. Like, do I think Aaron Rodgers has a higher IQ than Travis Kelsey? I do. But guess what? Travis Kelsey's doing dating shows and making jokes and catching footballs and having fun. He's not trying to tell you, hey, here's my Ayn Rand book. Shut up, (laughs) Atlas Lost. Shut up with your Atlas Shrug nonsense. You, 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 of all the books you could show on the Manning cast, you show maybe the most politically charged novel ever, like the novel that made a whole generation of wannabe Reagan conservatives. That's your book. You're like, oh, but I'm apolitical. You say you're like uh, Biden. How could he still be president with how he publicly speaks? What are you talking about, buddy? And by the way, you can say you can have all those opinions, but you can't have all those opinions and be like, why is everyone rooting against me? So stupid. It's just so ridiculous. Okay, I'm done. That was my two minutes. Well, I, I I don't read Atlas Shrugged. I read Andy Reid Shrugged because that was his reaction when he had 13 seconds left. He looked at Mahomes. He went, eh, yeah. Do what, what you are you gonna do? do? Let's go do, do what you gonna go do. Go win the game. Right, that one. You had a great line to close the podcast 15 <laughs> minutes ago. I wouldn't let you do it. I had more things to say. That one we can close with. This was fun. <laughs>